Hi, I'm Christy from Sapphire Skies Farm, and I just wanted to show you how I save seeds. So um, I'll start with what I have here on my counter in front of me. Um, let me just turn this around. Okay, so this came from a, pump, a squash, a kusha squash. They're striped. Here, this is what they look like. So this one I grew last year and squash tend to like stay alive and stay well. They don't rot out very fast. So squash are a nice thing to grow for a um, longer season of eating. Anyways, so what I do is I get out a paper towel or a scrap piece of paper. And after I've rinsed my seeds and um, got all the bits off of them, I put them on a towel like this and I just like kind of spread them out as much as I can and let them dry. And then every couple days I just come by and rotate them like this. Actually, probably about once a day and then spread them back out again. So here we have a bell pepper, and do the same thing. And then this is a jalapeno. So I save them on the counter like this and let them dry out and maybe leave it out for a few days. I probably get up to a week, but this way I could save my seeds. And then I put them in an envelope like these ones here. It's a self sealing so I can open it up and um, put the seeds inside. And then after I have the seeds inside, I can close it. And then anytime I pull a seed out, I can pull it out and it will still seal. I like the self-sealing because then I don't lose seeds all over the place. So I save my seeds and then I can sell them or trade them with people for more seeds. And this is a way to make it so that it's not so expensive to grow from year to year. Um, so I've saved like several varieties of tomatoes that I've grown and pumpkins and green beans and peas. You just let them sit and like for the peas, for example, or green beans, you let them sit on the vine longer than you would want to eat them. So they're not actually very tasty once they get all dried out, you know, but that's when the seeds are ready. Um, and then I wanted to show one more thing. Okay, so there's a few plants that you can grow from cloning them. So this is a tomato and this is just, it was just a piece that broke off and that's always so sad, right? When you break a plant. So tomatoes, if I can get close enough, see all these little hairs on this tomato plant? Each one of these hairs, oh, hey, there's a bug. Let me get that. Um, each one of these little hairs will grow roots if it touches water. And you know how we trellis up tomatoes? so that they're not touching the ground. Well, if this plant were to lay down on the ground, those hairs would root in the ground, okay? But we like to keep our tomatoes up so they don't rot out, you know? Anyway, so this I just put in the ground like a week ago, or in the water, I mean, and it's already getting all these roots. See all these roots? So you can just stick it in the water and you wanna make sure that the foliage is not in the water because they will just do this. Um, but yeah, anywhere that it has those little hairs, it grows those roots. And then this one is a passion fruit vine. Um, same thing, it broke off and so I put it in the water and it's not as obvious that it's growing some roots. In fact, you might not even be able to see them in this video, but it's starting to root out. So it will also grow from cuttings. And there's, not every plant will do this, but several plants will do this. and. You can Google it and see if the plant you have will do that, but definitely with tomatoes, it's a good way to save tomatoes and you can share them with your friends, tomato plants, um, or plant it in the ground. And I would usually let it get more roots than this before I put it in the ground, just to give it a better chance, you know? So another way you can save money when you are gardening is find a friend or two or three who have interest in growing like you do and go in on a seed order with them and you can split your seeds. You know, if you're going in with two friends or three friends, you can split your seeds with them and each person gets the same amount of seeds from a packet and 
then you're not wasting a whole bunch of seeds that are never going to get used and they're able to grow and you're able to grow and it didn't cost you quite as much. Okay, so now I'm outside and I'm going to show you um, my seed starters. So when I start seeds, each row I mark um, with what it is and I just do like one whole row of that variety and the same with each one. And so as you can see here, I've put in like three, four, maybe five of each type of tomato in this row. This is a striped German. And in one area, three have come up. In this area, two have come up. Here, two have come up. Here, none have come up. One here and none here. So germination is not always going to be exactly the same time and rate and speed with each seed. So I planted these all the same day and um, they just haven't all germinated at the same speed. But when I first started gardening, I'd put three seeds in a little space like this, and then I would come in and I would like break off one and toss it. Two actually, since there's three. So I would break these two off and leave this one in here. But now I pull them out and I separate them and I turn them in to something like this. And so each, each of these were, probably three of these were in one of the original seed starters. And then I separated them out into solo cups. And the solo cups I've drilled holes in the bottom. And I always like to use a really good quality um, soil mix in here. I try to get like a composted manure in here, maybe some worm gold, uh, and then some potting soil. <clears throat> so, now I have three plants where I would have just had one and where I might only plant one of these, I might know some other people who are interested in buying some starts. And so I'll sell these for a few dollars and maybe three or four, depending on the size. Like these ones are really big here. So these would sell for more like $4. Oh, some of them are getting really tall. Um, so these are about ready to up pot into a bigger pot and then I can sell them for a bit more money. And they'll really get a lot of roots. Let me um, pull one out really quick so you can see. So they get really a lot of roots. And by this point, this plant needs to get potted into a larger pot. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that later today. Um, but this way, so my seeds cost me $5, right? So here I have a plant that's worth about $5. And if I planted one seed and I was just gonna grow that one seed, then that, that seed pack cost me $5, where now I have maybe 10 or 15 of these plants that I've sold and they're helping to pay for my garden. So I think a lot of times initially people start gardening and they're like, wow, this is too expensive, I can't afford this. But if you're creative, and resourceful, you can make it so that it's affordable for you and maybe you can get some more people interested in gardening side by side with you. So sometimes you have plants that if you put a seed in the ground, it would take a long time for it to get big enough to really take up the space that that plant needs to be able to continue to grow. So here are my artichoke. Um, this one's a month behind the rest of these. But these are about now ready to go into the ground. So, and they're probably maybe three months old. So by starting them in pots, I'm able to use my garden for something else. I have peas in the space now where I'll probably put these. So instead of using that space for just a seed and just a sprout, I've been able to grow peas in that space. And now the peas are starting to be done and um, will be ready to go out. And I'll put these in and these will then grow and become my artichoke. Because that's what we're going for, right? And so I just plant seeds every month. Um, I live in an area in San Diego County where I can grow pretty much year round. Like this year we only had one night that got below freezing. That's not normal. We would usually get a little more than that. Um, but our growth season is very long and I understand that's not gonna be the case everywhere, 
but I'm going to recommend a website, gardenate.com. That's G-A-R-D-E-N-A-T-E.com. And they um, will, if you plug in your gardening zone, then you'll be able to see what you can plant and when, and it will tell you if it needs to be direct sown, which means put straight into the ground, or if it needs to, if you can start it indoors and then bring it outside later. Um, and that way you get the longest grow season for your area. Okay, so the last thing I wanna add is you wanna make sure that you're growing vegetables that are cost effective for you. So if you go through the grocery store in the middle of the summer, you're gonna see corn on sale for sometimes 50 cents each. And so maybe for you, it's not cost effective to try to grow corn. I like to try really unique varieties of corn. Um, so each year I have grown different kinds. I've tried popcorn before. That's a real fun one for us. And this year I'm trying a red popcorn. And someday I hope to, um, to grow the, I think it's called like glass gem corn. Um, anyway, so make sure that what you're growing is something that's cost effective to you, that you're not gonna get to the grocery store in the middle of the summer and go, oh my gosh, I spent how much money growing that garden? And look, look how cheap these vegetables are. Um, so you wanna make sure it's cost effective. And then the other thing is, is I like to grow varieties that I can't just find at the store. So I'm gonna try growing something like, let's see, let me turn this around. Here I have Mikado tomatoes growing. I have a giant peak Belgium tomato. I have Amish paste tomato. This is like a big, like a big hearty tomato that's really um, got a lot of meat, not a lot of seeds. Let's see, standard Romas. Another Amish paste here. These ones, the yellow pear cherry tomato. That is Ruby's absolute favorite. Instead of growing just Romas, I've also thrown in some striped Romas. This is the ox heart. It just barely sprouted. See, it's pretty little, but this is supposed to be giant, like a giant tomato. So yeah, that one, that's gonna be worth its weight in gold, right? Here is a summer sunrise. It will be orange. Golden plum, these will be little cherry tomatoes, but orange ones. This one is supposed to look like the moon. So I like to have varieties that I can't just find at the store. So it feels rewarding to me to walk through the store still. Romanesco broccoli. I've never seen that in the store. I'm sure it's there, but I haven't seen it. So I just really like to make sure I'm growing things that it feels like it was worth it. Oh, look how sad. I have a toddler. He threw one of my plants on the ground. Yeah. That's the other thing is you just never know what's going to happen in gardening. I mean, we fail all the time. Like here, this wonderful sprout was alive a day ago and then some bug got it at night and its neighbor is still there holding on tight, but all these are not. So just don't give up. If you fail at one thing, keep trying, keep going. And whatever you do, get your hands dirty and enjoy the sunshine. I'm Christy at Sapphire Skies Farm.